Good day. My name is George Franci. I'm going to demonstrate you how to use the Spirotor ultrasonic wavefront spirometer. This is Spirotor. The Spirotor spirometer is a standalone spirometer operated by a battery. The battery, the battery doesn't need to be changed because the device is rechargeable. You can recharge the device with this mini USB plug. You can use a mini USB cable. The mini USB cable can be connected to the, uh, to the mains plug and you can connect it to the computer or you can connect this to a USB charger. This is how you recharge this device. Okay. It's a standalone device. Uh, there is an on off button in the back of the device. It needs to be on on. This is the main switch and this is a small computer by itself. You can start the operating system of the computer with this button on the top. So I'm, I'm pressing it now, it's loading. It's loading now. And uh, it has got the Linux operating system inside. The first thing you are going to see will be the main screen. Uh, for the first time when you start the device, you will see actually a setting. You have to set the uh, date and time on, in the device. But you can select an already existing patient uh, by going using the buttons up and down. You can hit enter. You selected the main patient. And then you, it's better to start a new visit. And the, 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 the new visit, in the new visit, you have to enter the, the height, the weight, and other parameters of the patient. Uh, my height is exactly 180, so I just hit enter, and then it goes to the next section. The weight, unfortunately, I put up some weight, so I go back. Uh, I'm 92 kilograms now, so uh, you go down with enter. I'm not a smoker. Um, I didn't smoke. Um, and the uh, predicted algorithm can be selected by hitting down, um, the, the down button. And uh, we can, for example, select um, the ERS um, 93, uh, which is most commonly used in Caucasian population. And then it asks, do you want to save the data? And you go down, say yes. OK. Here we are at the main menu. You can see uh, FEC, VC, MVV uh, measurement, or SPO2 measurement. If, the, if there is an oximeter connected to the device, we also sell this device with an oximeter connection. You can go back to, you can go back to patients menu, and you can go to the settings menu. The uh, most simple and the, uh, the most typical uh, user of the, of the device is an FEC curve. I'm going to demonstrate you now how to do an FEC curve. You hit enter and you go to professional diagnostics and I'm going to show you how to do the procedure. First of all, you need to remove the disinfection caps from the flow sensor. This is the flow sensor. This is the main device. Um, I'm removing, removing the uh, disinfection caps. And you can apply either a disinfectable mouse piece, a plastic mouse piece, which is fully disinfectable, and therefore the device itself is also fully disinfectable. Inside is waterproof. Or you can use a bacterial filter, which we recommend to use. And uh, for example, in Australia, it's obligatory to use a bacterial filter all the time. These are single-use bacterial filters, and they have got 99.999% uh, efficiency uh, of filtering out uh, viruses and bacteria, but to have a hundred percent efficiency, you can also disinfect the tube inside. Um, uh, you can apply it uh, on the. Uh, there is an arrow on the flow meter. The arrow should be pointing pointing outwards from the patient, and you should apply the bacterial filter on the side where you are going to blow into the tube. So the the bacterial filter should be applied on the on the other side of the arrow. Um, the device switches off after some time because it saves on the battery. So I'm just uh, starting the device again. Actually, uh, I can also connect the device to the computer um, and it's going to charge the battery at the same time. So I'm selecting myself as a patient and I'm entering a new visit again. Uh, it's offering the same data, so it's easy to go through. Um, and I'm selecting the FEC curve. And I'm going to professional diagnostics. Start force expiration and inspiration test now. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate you how to do a simple FEC curve. 
you have to instruct the patient to inhale completely and fill, uh, fill, fill up his lung completely. And after filling up his lung, he needs to wait. Uh, and he has to wait uh, uh, at least uh, for a couple of seconds. And after uh, 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 processing this, he has to uh, inhale uh, as fast as possible. Okay, you put down the sensor. And uh, it's a normal curve because it's fully automated interpretation. You can scroll in. Um, maybe I show it closer to the camera. You can scroll in and you can scroll out. And you can, by, by scrolling in and you can scroll down and you can see all the parameters. Here in the first row, you can see the, um, the, the actual values that are measured. These are the reference values and this is the per percentage difference between the reference values and the uh, measured values. You can see that my uh, measured and, uh, and uh, predicted values are pretty much the same. So the measurement was pretty correct. The uh, FEV, FEV 1 over FEC is the so-called TIFNO index, which is the most in independent of the uh, effort uh, that I was doing, and that's 102%, so it's very close to 100%, so that's exactly uh, uh, as it was predicted. Now, um, <coughs> this is an FEC curve. There are much more complicated tests with the device that I'm not going to demonstrate now. Please consult the manual for that. Also, uh, uh, pre and post uh, measurements. Um, uh, you, uh, the patient is basically taking a bronchodilator or any kind of drug and you can do the efficiency measurement with this uh, particular device of the efficiency of the drug. Um, but I said, uh, as I said, please consult the manual for that. However, I'm going to demonstrate now how to uh, <coughs> transfer the data to a computer, how to synchronize the information with the computer, and also how to print the results with a, with a tablet printer. Uh, <coughs> this is Again, this is the Spirator device. This is the small thermal printer. Everything is pocket-based. And this is the cable with which you can connect the uh, device to the printer. On the side of the device, there is a connector. It's a micro USB connector, which is different from a mini USB. And they are not compatible. So there is only one way to connect uh, the, uh, the uh, printer cable. And you connect that here. And uh, the other side of the printer cable, you connect to the printer here. There is also only one way of connecting this to the printer. Of course, the printer uh, also, you first of course check if there is any paper in the printer. This has got paper. And you switch on the, p the printer. And when it's connected and uh, everything is switched on, then you just go in the menu. Uh, you hit the menu button on the spirometer, and you say uh, print report, and you hit enter, and it's generating the report. And the small handheld thermal printer is printing out the results. Okay, you can tear off the paper like this. It's very simple, very efficient. It also draws the, uh, the uh, FEC curve, the VT curve, all the parameters, uh, the uh, patient information, the predicted values, everything is stored here. Here is where the doctor signs, and that's it. This is a complete report of the patient information, and these small handheld and, and pocket-based devices are is, is basically a pulmonary laboratory that can also be used for bedside testing. Now, the computer software, you can um, start by launching the uh, spirometry software. This is the Australian edition of the, of the software. And um, if you just uh, set it, the, the cable is of course connected already to the computer because it's also charging. If you exit from the main menu, I think if you go to settings, um, you can do the USB connection. You can go down to the USB connection. You can uh, select USB connection. And you can say send spirometry data. I'm selecting send spirometry data now. It says sending data. You can click on start visit. And uh, the weight is 92 kilogram. And uh, you can click on start session. And I can just do the measurement real time.
This is a way of using the device real time and recording immediately to the computer. However, and I can accept it and I can just uh, say, yes, I'm accepting it and you can also print it out with the, with the main printer that can also be connected to the computer.